all right guys we are going to finish off the last question for 2018 structure and bonding examination paper let's get started so this is question three um first so the sections normally are solids um so let's have a look so this is a slightly different version of the variation of the question asking you to fill in the type of solids when you got given all these clues so first thing first for a when it doesn't conduct electricity as a solid but yes one molten so that must be ionic okay because if it conducts electricity as a solid that has to be metallic because you can then check all of these things i mean metals don't dissolve in water so that's pretty straightforward so the other things don't conduct but if you look at that look at that melting point look at that um, boiling point that must be a covalent network this just comes down to understanding of the different types of solid and this is molecular okay nice and easy next one you explain why solid A doesn't conduct electricity in solid state but then conducts in molten state. So I mentioned this before, so just imagine your ionic solids, you have the positive ions and negative ions surrounding each other in the giant three-dimensional structure and they're all locked in space. So in order to conduct electricity you need free moving electrons or ions. To carry charges as a solid they're all locked in place they're locked in position so they can't move because they're all being held in ion in the ionic bonding so when it's dissolved in water then you can become free moving and then you can carry charges okay so very straightforward so this part you require um oops supposed to be using the pin um so that's charged particles um this is three dimensional letters of positive and negative ions that are attractive to each other um they're locked in place they can't move but one molten they can move so it can't electricity very straightforward next one elaborate on the difference in melting point of solid b and d it's b and d again b is molecular d is metallic okay so elaborate on the difference between the melting points in b and d this is looking just looking at the different types of bonding within the structure so when you look at B B is um, molecular type of solid and so what does it have that's held together by weak intermolecular forces and these force of attraction are really really weak therefore you only require a, a low amount of energy to break them apart so therefore really low melting point okay so it's low weak um, intermolecular force so they can be easily broken easily broken um, so only a small amount of energy required and therefore low melting point if you look at d which is a metallic bonding uh, metallic type of solid which is held together by metallic bonds and then you can talk about what metallic bond is which, which is um, just the metal atom surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons and that force of attraction is really really strong and um, therefore it is going to be quite difficult to separate a the to break the bonds hence you need a large amount of energy now for these question i, I as you can see um it really just comes down to just learning all these things by heart um, discrete so it's covalent molecules um, molecular solid weak intermolecular forces really weak really easily broken so they can be separate with a little energy hence the melting point is low when you have solid d so it's made of 3d ladders surrounded by c delocalized electrons so which this is a very strong force of attraction so you need to give it a large amount of energy to break the bonds hence a high melting point okay next one now use annotated diagram to show how solid A, I think that's an ionic solid, um, is able to dissolve in water. So this is when you can draw the three dimensional structure again, or you can just do positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative. I mean, we, I can see where that's coming from. Now, if you put water in here, if you put water in here, and this is what water does, the positive lines, are going to be surrounded by the because just remember your water molecule your h2o is a polar solvent 
So this, the positive ends are the hydrogens and the oxygen is a negative end. So the oxygen is slightly negative and the H pluses are, are positive charged. So what the oxygen is going to do is the water molecule is going to fade, they're going to turn around, they're going to position themselves in a way that, oops, that all of the slightly negatively charged oxygen are going to surround the positive ion. And this force of attraction is going to be stronger than the attraction between the positive and the negative. Because, but then you may go, but this is only slightly negative charge, and this is a negative charge, like this is more negative. Yes, that's more negative, but just think about how many of these slightly negative charged water molecules can surround this positive ion. You will be easily pulled apart by the water molecule because this force of inter interaction is much, much stronger. Same with the negative ion. The negative ion are going to be surrounded by the slightly positive end of the water molecule, which is the hydrogens. So as you can see, it's like you, you know, you, um, you kind of just what's the best analogy to think about this like it's like kind of you you know a couple going to a wedding for example um you got a boy you got a male and female a couple and then you have a bunch of these little kids you know at, at the wedding and some of them really want to dance with the with the guy some really some of them really want to dance dance with the girl for example and then you get pulled apart really easily yes the kids are smaller than the adult but then there's so many kids and you feel bad you know you don't want to push them away um so you just you know get separated and you have fun with the little kids dance around on the dance floor you know you can think of it like that okay now explain the attraction that allows solar light to be soluble in water so this is just literally what i just said so it just comes down to writing it down um it's the slight little i'm just going to show you the the schedule but it's just a little bit easier otherwise it's just too much to write what i just said so when it dissolves in water it breaks into the ions why is it breaking the ions because they are attracted to the charge ends of the polar water molecule. The slightly negative end, the charges are oxygen, they face the positive one, and the positive ends, um, which are the hydrogens, attract to the negative ones, and they cause it to pull apart and dissolve. Now, the really, really important thing you need to understand, I mentioned this in my other video before as well, in terms of solubility, you have to talk about the strength of the force of attraction, um, the reason why something dissolves because the force of attraction because the force of attraction between the new arrangement is strong enough to overcome what they had before okay so if like why doesn't metal dissolve in water because the force of attraction between the metal atoms is too strong they are too happy together you can't break them apart okay so they are already very very stable you put in the water the water can't come blend in they can't pull them apart so it doesn't dissolve something is only soluble if you mix them together with a solvent like water and then if the new arrangement in this case the ions and the water that arrangement is kind of I'll just put that in writing so the ions hanging out with water is stronger than the ions hanging out with ions and stronger than water hanging out with water. So the uh, oops, water hanging out with water. So this is just saying that this is my original arrangement. That's what we had before mixing them together. But once we mix them together, you form this new arrangement is which is stronger. And that's why it dissolves. And that is going to be, so that last paragraph if you ever get asked about solubility that is going to be your guaranteed pathway to an excellent answer you have to talk about why something dissolves in that regard don't throw in that polar dissolves like dissolves like crap i mean that's only there to help you remember it it is not scientific that's not going to help you okay so i hope you found this video helpful enough um, I will start tackling um, probably some 2018 uh, organic, um, but I would need to attend some level three stuff as well. Okay, so hopefully you found this video helpful enough and um, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.